Welcome to the Auto Sport Radio 2019 show. I'm your host, Don Kay. We are live from McGilvery Speedway at 30th and High School in the beautiful town of Speedway, Indiana. Tonight's show, as always, is presented by the Honda and Honda HPD, uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, and SVRA. Um, got a couple other quick things to mention. I just sent one of them off. First off, the uh, young lady server, Lori, it's her birthday today. And uh, it's the birthday of Steve Jordan, who has worked uh, 60 or 51 consecutive Indianapolis 500s on the Tech Committee. Uh, and he's hoping to do number 52 next year. Uh, how'd you like the Grand Prix at Road America? Uh, do you like the winner? I'm sure all of you noticed as you uh, watched the telecast, they didn't spend a whole lot of time on Alexander, but there was a lot of good racing in the back, a lot of racing for positions, a lot of bumping and grinding. It was great. I thought it was a good race. The next event, of course, for the NTT IndyCar Series is the uh, Honda Indy at Toronto, July 14th, and it will be telecast at 3 p.m. on NBCSN. Next week, my first scheduled guest is going to be the uh, uh, race analyst on the IMS radio network, the Viking. Anders Krohn will be here, and I'm working on a couple more to get them to happen next week. So I want to remind you, if, uh, if it's time for your favorite doctor's appointment, the dentist, the place to go is Dr. Jack Miller and Dr. Liz Lewis at the Indy Dental Group. They are phenomenal. Their people are good. You get treated like a king or a queen when you walk in the door. Make an appointment. Number is 317-846-6125. And if you need computer problems solved, the gentleman sitting right here is the guy to do it. This is Jack that I talk about because we've had computer problems. He's here helping us get everything straightened out. If you got a problem, call him. Computer Overdrive. They're at uh, Lindhurst and Crawfordsville on the northeast corner. Number is 317-328-0766. And if it's time for you to get insurance for your home, your car, or your commercial building, do what many have done. Call Jack Pardee. They're located at 5004 West 16th Street in Speedway. Call them. Talk to them. You'll find you get a better price and better coverage for less money. Number is 317 now, my first guest is a gentleman that's been around for a long, long time. Well, not that long. He's, he quit a bit younger than I am, but he is, uh, he is the president of Grand King Race Shops and the president of Advanced Welding and, and Engineering. And his business is starting to swing in a direction that I found kind of interesting, so I invited him on, and he's here tonight. Please welcome the one, the only, Mr. Bill Throckmorton. <laughs> now... You have what started out to be a museum in honor of Grand King, but now it's gotten to be a working shop. you got a bunch of cars in there working on. And it seems to me that since Tony Perella has gotten into this thing and he wanted to make vintage racing a sport, it's grown. Everybody's grown. Uh, uh, Gary Munshine out in, in Pennsylvania, his uh, classic racing times has grown. Uh, the group that was at uh, the road of uh, uh, Milwaukee Mile this past weekend, the Indy, uh, Vintage Indy Registry, they have grown. The whole vintage thing is growing big, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> uh, I, I would say uh, the vintage racing is growing in leaps and bounds. And uh, we run a lot with Mike Lashmet's group, which is the Indy Vintage Registry. Um, but I would say in the last two years, the growth in that area has probably doubled maybe even tripled. Um, uh, it, it's really kind of amazing. People are learning to appreciate some of the older cars from the you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And it, it's really neat to be able to see them run again. If you were a kid and remember like I was and watched them run 60s, 70s, it's really neat in 2019 to see the same car back on the track just as nice as it was then. And some of them are being driven by some of the guys that drove them back then. Oh, exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of neat to see, too. You had a car up at Milwaukee. Who drove it for you? Um, we took a 98 Riley Scott, and we had a gentleman named Bob Receiver. Um, it's a car that we've, it was a static display car, and we did a ton of work to it from the electronics, engine, all the uh, 
Oh gosh, wire looms, the pie system. It's just unreal on the newer cars, everything there is to them. And, and we're one of the few places that can do the downloads and all that work on them. Um, and I've got between Mike, me, Chuck, uh, Buckman, John Martin. God, if you go there, you probably got 7, 15, 16. God, we're probably 180 years worth of, of racing years in three guys. Um, no, what is it? about it why do guys uh, guys are looking and gals i suppose are looking to buy some of the older cars and run them what what sparked the interest all of a sudden it seems like now uh, the, the the vintage cars are a hot item yeah they, they're they are um i think you're gonna you know the the 60s and 70s cars the aluminum tub cars they're getting to a point where they're really hard to find um a lot of them have been bought up and they're very expensive now um very uh, you know, I think the next step is going to be your 90s cars because some of that's getting hard to find. Um, you know, it, it's it's all in what you like, but it uh, it's really neat to hear an old Offy fire up and run, um, especially if you're, you know, a lot of the kids are getting interested in this because they, they've heard about some of this, but they've never seen it. So when they actually hear and see it, it's, it's something new and exciting. And you have in your shop the Olsenite Eagle. Yes, I have. Uh, in 1972, there were 30 Eagles actually built, and this is number 29. And uh, it's Olsenite Eagle. We have uh, Lindsey Hopkins Lightning, which Roger McCluskey drove, and it's the actual car that Larry Rice was co-rookie of the year in 78 with Larry, or Larry Rice and uh, Rick Mears. They were co-rookies. Um, we have Wally Dallenbach's Kuzma that he ran in 71, the Sprite car. Um, we have a, a Delara, a 97 Delara in Ganassi colors. We have the Riley Scott, which uh, Richard Childress was tied into, black number three that ran in 99 with Brawl Boisel. We have everything from midgets to old Sprint cars and, and a lot of Indy cars now. Uh, you got quite a number of Indy cars in your shop. Are they in the process of being restored, or are some of them finishing up for sale? Um, we are finishing them up. I think on all of them, we've done some work um, because we're a rare place where you could actually drop your tub off, have your tub repaired, or we could rebuild your offy up in the engine room. So we're kind of the one-stop shop around here. Um, but we are selling. We're brokering a lot of cars, and... Uh, uh, Mike Lashmont and I have uh, combined, and, and we're pretty knowledgeable about a lot of types of the different cars. So uh, we know a lot of people that we can reach out to to broker them. So that, that's another thing that we're really getting into heavy. Is there a lot of people looking for these cars? You'd be amazed. Today I probably had five phone calls, and two of them were from California. Oh, really? Yeah. How, how did they see your cars? Um, actually... Uh, through uh, the vintage registry and a lot of stuff on Facebook, you know, it's uh, it gets out there. With computers now, we can we can go farther and faster than we ever did with a newspaper. Yeah, you're and cheaper. Yes, you can buy a computer for a couple hundred bucks, fifty dollars a month. You got internet and away you go. I buy them for less from the guy over here, well, computer that, overdrive. <laughs> uh, upcoming now, first back up last weekend at the Milwaukee Mile. Um, I was told by you that it was a really good turnout, and Mike said the back gate was very good. So, was, was it yeah, a, it, you know, you, you got to remember we were in Milwaukee. It's June, but the last thing you think when you walk over to the restroom is that you're going to have snowflakes hitting you in the forehead, and we had that. Um, it, it was cold. It was rainy, but. There was a ton of ARCA cars. We had a great turnout for the vintage registry. I think there was over 20 cars, um, some pretty phenomenal ones. Um, and the gate and, you know, the, the grandstands had a lot of people in it for as bad as the weather was. And I know that uh, uh, I believe he's already confirmed that he's going to do the same show next year. He did so well at it. So it's a plus. It's nice to see Milwaukee gates open. Did anybody talk to the uh, president of, of the fair board and say, how about, you know, Indy cars that ever cross your mind to bring them back? You know, I, I, from what I understand, I think the the, uh, 
the fairground still owes the state money because the facility is beautiful. They just put in new grandstands. They spent a lot of money, and it's a shame that Indy cars are not running there. And and I think that's something that you, you're good at sending emails to a certain person. I, I think yeah, you I've, need to send him one. My wife sent a few here and there. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, the next event for the uh, uh, Vintage Indy Registry, of course, is going to be at the WTT Gateway Raceway coming up in, what is it, August 22nd or something, I think. It is. Yes, yes, and uh, that, that's pretty fabulous. I mean, the IndyCar race is great. Um, Gateway Racetrack is phenomenal. The lighting, they run it at night. And we'll have probably 30 to 40 vintage cars there also. And Chris Blair does a phenomenal job with that place. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, that all the different, there's several different groups that are running the vintage cars. And I know last week at Milwaukee with the Vintage Indy Registry, they've really stepped it up a notch. And people need to keep an eye on that. We had a... Um, he he's getting a lot of different sponsors, a lot of racing sponsors. Yeah, he is. I was surprised when I asked yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, like, when wow. you – yeah, he, he's getting several. You know, from Bell Helmets, you have uh, – um, Bubba Burger. Yeah, or, Bubba Burger. You have um, – yeah, I mean, everybody. You know, he, he's got insurance groups. But he had a really good dinner, acknowledged everybody, had, had a, uh, you know, close to a five-star dinner, a banquet. It was really classy, and he, he stepped it up a bunch. And it's, it's going to grow, grow, and grow if you keep promoting it like that. He's doing a fabulous job. Well, it seems that, that you know, that, that Vintage is getting, if you, if you get the emails from uh, SVRA, good grief. They've got them flying in the door. They're really, really doing well, and I've I got to assume I haven't talked to uh, – uh, Mr. Munshine recently, but I, I the last time I did, he said you know things were picking up for him. So the whole vintage racing world is coming to life. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. I think all those venues and all the groups are uh, doing very well, you know. And uh, I, you know, I think several of the participants, you know, travel and work with all the groups. So it's you know, and, and plus it's just a good group of old guys, and not necessarily not all of them are real old, but we're uh, you know. It's it's just fun to sit there. You visit. You look at other cars, and and some of the work is absolutely beautiful. You know, I remember talking to Bobby Alice, uh, uh, Bobby uh, Bobby Unser, and I said, "What was it like you're driving the Olsenite Eagle?" He said, "I'm going to tell you something. First couple of years, I didn't know what the hell Olsenite was." He said, "Then I got a case of toilet seats. I went, oh, that's what they." Are. <laughs> he said, "As a matter of fact, I still got some left." <laughs> um, what's your primary thing? I mean, you've you've got. If Grand King were to come back today, he'd say, that's not my shop. Why? Because it's clean and you can see. Yeah. It's, it's lighted. I, you know, I, I, I'm i a pain. You can ask Mike. When you, you drop something on the floor or make a mess, it, it better get clean. Um, but we try to keep the place nice. And, and we have a lot of people that come in tour and a lot of the museum uh, – you know, I, we ended up, uh, actually the Speedway contacted us last weekend and said, we have some people from New Zealand that want to see your shop. And this was Sunday, so Steph says, well, we'll do it. You know, we really didn't want to do much on Sunday because we've been down there seven days a week forever. Uh, we show up and there's not two New Zealanders, there's two bus loads and two, <laughs> two cars. We're like, oh boy, <laughs> you know, glad you told us about this one. Um, but it was fun. They enjoyed it and uh, had a good time. So, I mean, the museum part of it's great. There's a ton of history in there, and we get more and more. Um, it, was, it was really neat. Uh, uh, the, the month of May, had a gentleman walk in the door and kind of caught me off guard. And it was the Snevas. Really? And... Uh, they came in, we talked, looked around, and, and they all had, all the Snevas had history in our shop somewhere along the line, from our Indy cars to the uh, Sprint cars, you know, the Pink Lady. And two weeks later, in the mail, I receive a uniform from Tom Sneva, um, a helmet from Jan Sneva, postcards, all their pictures from when they won the camera championships, and it was really neat. Um, and they sent a really nice letter that said that the the best thing they had in the whole month of May was the tour and visit at our shop, and that they thoroughly loved it. And uh, about a week later, had another gentleman show up, and uh, 
Hadn't seen him in a long time, and his wife is Joy Astone, which is Wally Muskowski's daughter. And Wally worked in our shop for a long time. Yeah, he did. And uh, Tommy was great, and Tommy won several races in a Grant King car, and he actually won an Aggie's house car. And yesterday, I got another box in the mail, and it had all of Tommy's pictures of his wins and had Tommy's uniform in the box. So it's it's really neat that a lot of the old drivers are appreciating what we're doing and uh, helping us build on everything because it's a lot different. Uh, I think our place has personality where if you go to the Speedway Museum, you see a lot of neat stuff, but nobody can tell you the story on it or you don't get the story. And uh, that's something we really work hard on. Every, every corner of our shop has a story. Some of them might be real interesting that we can't tell you, but there's <laughs> plenty of stories. Um, well, I find that hard to believe. Race, and and, and race I got to give kudos to a gentleman that's here tonight also, Bill P. in Speedway Community Television. Bill has been working very hard for probably the last year and a half, two years, I would say. And he stopped in, filmed different events that we've had. And it was really a surprise, and he did a spectacular job. And I've heard nothing. What this, no, wait a minute. It was a surprise that he did a good job? I had a feeling he'd do well, but when I seen it, it, it was oh. pretty spectacular. And he's been showing a, a little snippet on our shop the whole month of May on Speedway Television. So it's kind of fun to watch, and you can look it up on YouTube also um, under Working Race Shop Museum. And, and you need to watch it just because you'll see the kind of work Bill does. It's, it's great. And I can't thank them enough for being here every week for the last, what, year and a half, Ted? Or whatever, two years that they, they do the television camera that gets on, on my website on YouTube and uh, on Speedway Television. I want to thank both Bill and Brian for that. And I also got to take a second and thank my... IT genius Ted, we've had some problems the last couple of weeks, but he's got them solved. Because I haven't a clue. And I, I I sent him a message when he sent me something, we got to do this. And I sent him a message, you need my help? He said, what the hell are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Nothing. So i got to thank Ted for his help. Um, you have a service that nobody else in town has. Now, there's a museum, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But you have a vehicle to, t if somebody, you know, get six or eight guys, gals, or a mix thereof and want to tour some shops, they can contact you and, and do that. You'll pick them up somewhere and take them around and drop them back. Yeah, we, we have a 37-foot stretch limo. Oh, yeah, that's and, what it is. Uh, you know, it's kind of fun. We, we enjoy that. That's, that's one of the fun things we get to do. You, we've kind of toned it down to where we pick people up from their destination. We'll give them a tour of our shop and then take them back. Um, just because we've got so much going on that it takes almost two hours to go through our shop properly now. So that's it? You pick them up, take them to your place, you don't take them out to lunch? or uh, We can do whatever they want. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you got you got Mike in action. Heck, you can leave. Mike will take over. Mike does a good job when I leave. Oh, we I depend on him quite a bit. Um, what is it you want to accomplish that you haven't? You've been involved in racing. You've driven. Your daughter drove. She won. Um You've been involved, you know, and, and so has Fluffy, or as other people call her, I would tend, uh, something that I'm working on really hard, and a, and a goal of uh, Stephanie and mine is to put a car in the Indy 500. Really? <laughs> One of the 71s or 74s? Or? Uh, no, it, oh. it would be a more modern version, oh. but uh, that's something that I've, I've, I'm really working on hard, and I'd, I'd like to do that in the next few years. Um, th there's a lot of good people that I work with, um, you know, financially, we can't do it by ourselves, but we know a lot of people and, and we would like to, we're trying to put the finances together through several different people and I'm trying to work with a, a few certain individuals to put a team together. Really? Yes. I see. I know, I, I know there's a team manager that's probably retired, but he might dust himself off, Lee Kunzman. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If, if we did go racing, it would be the old guy's race team because <laughs> I think everybody would be 70 or old, older that I'd, I'd take to the track with me. So. Well, I, I could recommend an engineer who's under 70, I'm quite sure. Who's that? Well, he's sitting right over there. He's got a 500 championship ring. Can't be. He's friends with Buckman. Buckman's almost 80, so. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know. No, like, there's a lot of good guys we could get to put together. 
you know, what is it about racing, motorsports in particular, and racing and, and IndyCar and short track, open wheel stuff, that you get in it? And I mean, look at me. I should have left 50 years ago, even though I've been doing this for 50 years. I should have left a long time ago. I could have been yeah. a singer with Phil would have hired me for his uh, the beep line band, and I'd have been a star. Could have been, yes. And uh, tr trouble is, he said, that, what would I do? Well, you can pick up the equipment and move it would be my suggestion. <laughs> and incidentally, if you haven't seen Beepline, you've got to see them. They are good. The, uh, their Facebook page is the Beepline, one word, on Facebook. Look it up. they got stories. Don't You see one on Phil. Don't pay attention to that one. The other guys are professionals. Read those. But they're, uh, they're around the area, and they're getting bigger and better, and they're opening for some guy I never heard of. The end of the month. Is it the end of June? The end of July. They're doing something for something. What's the guy's name? I, I don't John Wade? Wait. John Wade. I don't know him. I mean, I don't Good know of him. So they're the opening act, and uh, you go out there and see him, and, you know, bring some tomatoes with you in case they're not that good. Um, what got you into racing to begin with? How, how did you get hooked and started on it? You know, I, I, I don't know if it's unfortunate or fortunate, but... Uh, I think I've told you before, on my fourth birthday, Ralph Ligori and Jim Herdebees gave me my first quarter midget. And I've been racing ever since. And, I, and Ralph is suffering for that right now. Yes. He's not in good shape. He's physically yes. having a problem. With, sorry to hear that. And well, Ra Ralph had to, a, wore out a lot of race cars in oh his yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Well, has he raced, what, six decades? Over six or seven decades he raced. Yes. Seven decades. Amazing. Amazing guy. Good guy. Always, always good to talk to him, but you can't talk to him anymore because he's got problems. But anyway, um, has it crossed your mind that, you know, I've been doing this long enough now, I should maybe flip burgers at Burger King or something? Or well, on certain days and certain times, <laughs> yes. Uh, I see. Yeah, it crosses my mind. But, uh, we, I mean, we'd like to slow down in a few years, but I, it's uh, – Right now we're we're full full bore ahead, and uh, you know I'm sure in a couple of years Stephanie threatens that I've got to slow down and we're going to do a few things. But uh, we just uh, did a deal where we're going to take a streamliner to Bonneville. We were hired to do that. So um, yeah, but see the good thing about what you just said, you were hired to do it. Yes, you're not doing it. You're hired to go out and do it. So that's a good exactly. Thing. Yeah. That's, somebody that's else big, is paying the bills. Right. Yes, that's <laughs> that a That works plus. well. Yes. You know, it, it's interesting, this sport, and and the number of people that, even kids that come out that I see at the various uh, vintage operations, young kids are looking, wow, it started here, and look where it is today. And, you know, it's it's interesting. They talk, get to talk to some of the old drivers and see what it was all about, what it was like, and, and uh, get interested in it. And, of course, once, as you know, once you get somebody interested in this sport, you got them. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, all you need to do is go out to the fairgrounds and watch some of those little kids with their quarter midgets, you know. It's fun. Just w just watching them, you'll, you'll giggle and laugh. But some of those little guys are, uh, and girls are very talented. Uh, it was just announced today that the uh, Lucas Oil Driving School, or Racing School, is now the official uh, driving school of the uh, Road to Indy program. And that's great. I know the guy that, that owns it, that started it, uh, Neil Enerson from uh, um, Newport Ritchie, Florida. And he's got a phenomenal thing going, and, and, and now they're the official driving school. So they'll take kids and get them educated how to drive, and then they can move up to the USF 2000 and on. And, of course, if you pay attention to the ladder, Road to uh, Indy program, the ladder program, there's so many guys that have come, and gals that have come through that that are now in IndyCar. In fact, there's more of them than there are openings, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can you can watch them step up through the different ladders from the go-karts up through all the different series. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time. And uh, don't forget, obviously, how many cars are you taking to uh, w, WT Gateway? You know, it's, it's hard to tell. I'd, it, we're probably going to end up working on more cars than so we probably won't even take any of our own cars oh well that's um too bad yeah that's what yeah have so you got, if you got if you got guys calling you say hey if you're gonna take a car i'd like to drive it um you know uh, on that deal a lot of them are the owners that actually drive or their yeah. relatives or friends um you know and, and that can be interesting in itself because a lot of them are nervous and don't know that much about them and you have to calm them down and and uh 
you know, it, there, there's a lot of different aspects to the whole deal from just wrenching the car, making sure it's safe, um, to restoring one properly, you know, where, where the identity is, is perfect on it, to actually taking care of some of these car owners. And, and uh, but but it, it's fun. I mean, it's, it's low pressure compared to running with the All-Stars or something like we used to, you know. Yeah, so. Well. All right, I always enjoy going down to the shop, and again, if you haven't had a chance to be there yet, now you won't see Howdy there. Howdy will not be there because he'll be taking a nap during the day. He won't be there, but they're located. Hey, we got a great couch in the back room there. <laughs> oh boy, now he will be there. Uh, and they're located at 8144 Crawfordsville Road. 8155. 55. Well, I know it was a. F 8155 Crawfordsville Road, and if you're going west on Crawfordsville Road, as you go up the hill, if you get to uh, Dandy Trail, you went too far. It's on the left, and you'll see it. Go down the hill there, and stop in, see him, catch him by surprise. Yeah, we have no see problem him. with that. Anyway, keep an eye out. If you get a chance, stop in and see him. Thanks for being here, Bill Throckmorton. Thank you. My next guest will be on his way momentarily once he gets released from captivity. I want to mention to you, if you haven't seen the uh, uh, Mario Andretti exhibition at the, Indian, or the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum, don't hesitate. Go there and see it. It's really quite good. And if, when you walk in the door, you see this nice-looking blonde sitting there. Tell her, I heard about it. i got to be here. She'll take care of you. Um, you know, if you want to find out what these guys like about, and gals that like about the riding an Indy car, take it riding a two-seater, the Indy racing experience. It's a great event, great time. You'll enjoy the heck out of it. It might scare you a little bit, but uh, we've only had one problem where the wing fell off, and that was a number of years ago. It hadn't happened since. You might get a ride with Mario or Davey Hamilton or who knows. You never can tell. Go on their website, IndyRacingExperience.com, and uh, find a date. And in the promo box, put SJ1. You get a 50% discount. <clears throat> or you can call Shonda at 317-243-7171. Do yourself a favor. Take a ride. You'll love it. And the best part of it is, Howdy won't be there. He's afraid. I've, I've tried to get him to get, uh, No, no. He said, oh, here he comes. Sit down before you fall down. <laughs> uh, if you like vintage racing, SVRA has a fabulous magazine. It's called Speed Tour now. It's a first-class magazine, great articles, great stories about the cars that you knew as kids. Read about them, read about the drivers, see who's doing it. Just go to uh, svra.com and uh, order the uh, Speed Tour quarterly. You'll love it. It's a great magazine. And our next event will be the uh, 2019 Portland Vintage Racing Festival, July 25th to the 28th at Portland International Raceway. If you're anywhere in the northwest, Take a ride. You'll love it. And they, the next event after that, August 1st to the 4th, is a vintage, the Brickyard Vintage Racing Invitational at the Speedway. You'll want to see that. Um, do you need anything embroidered? Well, there's only one place to go, of course, and that's Stitches, too, on Gasoline Alley. Just give Fran a call and tell her what you need, how you throw it, drag it, send it, ship it, whatever it takes to get it there, she'll take care of it. Her number is 317 271 34 44. My next guest is a gentleman who spent a lifetime in motorsports for some inexplicable reason. He has, uh, in his early time, driven sprint cars. I couldn't do that, and wouldn't do it, actually. Uh, he uh, worked his way through, worked for uh, Chris Economaki at National Speed Sport News, got connected with uh, Bruton Smith, and was the uh, general manager and promoter at the uh, New Hampshire Speedway. He decided... I can do this. So he has taken over promotion of the uh, Gas City Speedway, and from what I understand, it's booming. Please welcome Mr. Jerry Grapens. Thank you. I appreciate you inviting me on there. Well, I, I had to apologize to your lady that does the PR, because I read it, but I didn't pay attention to where it came from, because it never crossed my mind. <laughs> and she, she sent me an email that says, why, U.S.? What did you? Linda and I go, uh, Linda Mansfield does a great 
job for us, and, and uh, we're both uh, disciples of Chris Economaki's uh, school of motorsports. We both got our doctor degree from him, and uh, in motorsports, and that's that's good. And and Linda was the first female uh, editor, uh, you know, the news editor for for the paper back in her day, from Pennsylvania. So we used to go see Linda at a lot of uh, sprint car tracks out in 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 the Pennsylvania area when I, when I worked at Speed Sport, and so we've gone back a long way. And when I started. Uh, working with the track I, I've got a PR background but I don't have time to to do all the things you need to do with it so uh, Linda and I met and uh, she agreed to help out and it's worked out really well uh, was was taking over the the management and promotion at uh, Gas City a mistake or is are you thrilled and happy with what's going on other than mother nature now yeah no and you can't control that so I've, as I've gotten older I try to learn it doesn't mean you you uh, you like it a little less uh, I pray a lot you know and especially on Fridays I, I uh, in fact I, I've got a great guy that uh, prayer partner and in, in, uh, for the USAC midget race uh, a few weeks ago we I said man Bruce we need to pray that the the rain he says man I'm, I've got this he said, "I'm going to pray that it goes to the north and to the south of us," and uh, and it did. But it, it rained all those other areas, but not right at the track. We ran it. We had a decent crowd, but not the great crowd we would have had if it had been clear all around. And so I went back to him and I said, "You know," I said, "He answered our prayers, but I said we left out one important thing. I said, pray for a big crowd too next time." So uh, so we're uh, so we got we're working on it, and uh, and God's responded nicely. But but it, it was. Um, you know, it's been very rewarding. Uh, I was honored uh, in January at the Harf Banquet to be the recipient of the of the Mike Heimel Auction uh, Promoter of the Year that Harf gives out every year, and I didn't expect that for our first year of operation. And so, uh, uh, with the BC39 and all these other great promoters that we have in Indiana to uh, to win that was uh, w was good. But I, I'll tell you, just meeting the fans and having the fans come and say we really appreciate you. Uh, opening this place back up and getting it going that's been very rewarding what uh what have you done since you've taken over now you leased the facility didn't you? right yeah so I've, I've got a multi-year lease and an option to buy if i get crazy enough to ever think about doing that but uh, uh but you know we we really cleaned up the facility quite a bit uh from from what it was we repainted all the grand about anything that that hasn't moved we've painted and uh we've uh, we last year we installed a brand new public address system uh uh that's uh, that's right up there that that works we've got a wireless mic capability we, we put um we like to do some intermission things as well in addition to the racing that appeals to some of the other folks that uh, that maybe are hardcore race fans but want to come out for entertainment so um the pa part of it's very uh, a, a big part of it um so we we just keep trying to uh, make a difference we we asphalt the the entrance all the way from uh, the highway in uh, takes you right into the pit area as well a lot of people commented on that this year so we we keep doing uh, things to uh, make it more fan friendly and and making it uh, 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 clean and an inviting place to bring a whole family i've heard from a friend of mine who's a, a short track f fiend a fiend. fiend. What exactly is a fiend? I've heard that my whole life. Do you know what the definition of fiend is? Because I really don't. I didn't know. But oh, a fiend, yeah. it means they're pretty passionate about it, though, right? And they're, idi they're idiots. Yeah, oh, okay, they're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> he said, um, I said, have you been up to Gas City? He said, I went once. I said, why only once? Because you love it. He said, well, the fans that have been there will reserve their seats. Yeah. Like at, at 2 o'clock in the morning the night the day before. I know. I didn't know when they snuck in. So if 2 o'clock in the morning, because they do sneak well, in and put blankets yeah. down, yeah. Yeah, and he said, if you even get close, they let you know. Whoa. <laughs> but I understand when Mother Nature has cooperated, your, your uh, car count has been spectacular. You've drawn... Uh, upwards of a hundred cars on more than one occasion, and the and the grandstands are full, which. The last couple of years it ran, they weren't because I was there. Okay, yeah, no, we've benefited. Uh, we've we've been fortunate enough to only be rained out twice. So some of the other tracks in the area, unfortunately, have been rained out. So we've benefited from that. Our car count. What do we have? 116 cars Friday night, Linda. We've been in the 105 to 116 range. Uh, uh, I think the lowest car count was was it 90 or did we? Have we been above 100, about 90. So we've been very fortunate. Uh, we bring different classes in each week kind of as a get we've we've got our core of non-wing sprints modified street stocks and hornets and then we try to bring a, a guest series in such as micro sprints mini sprints or tough trucks that come in over from ohio um 
to add something different to the program. So we've been we've been very fortunate. The back gate's been very good in that regard with the pit passes. Do you do anything with USAC? Do you do sprints or midgets out there? Yeah, we were just part of the USAC Midget Week, and uh, that's where we dodged the rain. And then uh, we were off the schedule last year for Sprint Week, but they put us back on this year. So we've got a Sprint Week date coming up. We kick it open. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty important. Um, on Thursday, uh, July 18th, uh, we uh, we open Sprint Week, and so they'll go from us to Plymouth um, and uh, – and then to Kokomo, Lawrenceburg, and then Wednesday, the following week, they go to Terre Haute, Putnamville, um, Bloomington, and then finish it up at Hopstad. So we're really – they added a race, which I didn't think they would do. They didn't, so they didn't take anything away from somebody. Um, they put us back on it, which was great. It's going to be a Thursday night instead of a Friday. I'm fine with that. And then we come back with uh, – last year they gave me a race – and it, we were supposed to do it Brickyard weekend. If you remember, that was just yeah. torrential rains the whole time. So we were able to do uh, um, the make the James Dean Classic um, a USAC uh, sanctioned race, and and that was our largest crowd last year as part of the James uh, Dean Festival. There, James Dean was uh, born just about 10, 15 minutes from where the track is, right. and raised there in Fairmount. So he's still, even all these years later, still big icon. So it was oh, good. Yeah. yeah, I think some of his relatives are still around. For yeah, him. in fact, I, I deal with. Uh, Marcus Winslow, who was his cousin, and he lived uh, with uh, with uh, with with Marcus and his his dad, that that family on the farm. Uh, James's mother passed away when he was like eight or ten years old. They were living in California, and they, he, his dad sent him back to Indiana because he couldn't take care of him working on the railroad and traveling. So his aunt and uncle there, the Winslows, uh, uh, raised him, and that farm is still there, and uh, it's there's still a lot of nostalgia there for James Dean people that come in. Um. What got you started in racing? Why? You know, my dad uh, took me to races when I was a little boy. I, I, I enjoyed going with him. He raced a little bit at the Kokomo Speedway, and I would go uh, up to watch him, and then I'd ride back with him in, in his pickup truck and uh, the open trailer. And I remember putting his racing helmet on and, and falling asleep in the front seat, you know, with him. Uh, back then, trucks didn't have rear seats. They just, there was just yeah. one cab. So, uh, But I, I enjoyed that. And we he, I got to go to my first Indy 500 in 1969. I think I was eight years old. And, and so we went to that every year. But we would go to races around this area, and we'd go to the Hoosier 100 and, um, you know, the, the Hudson. Hundred, we would uh, he Kokomo. We we would travel, so we we had that. That's one of those things, um, a father son thing to to do that I was fortunate enough to get to, and so it hooked me. And then when I was just uh, fifteen, just shy of my sixteenth birthday, I, I bought a used sprint car um, to fix up with the idea of racing. It. And so um, I, I my first race, I was just a few weeks shy of my of my 16th birthday, and I raced down at Paragon. So I had a couple years of driving sprint cars, and then my mom. <laughs> stepped in when I was getting ready to go to Ball State for college, and she said, uh, you need to retire from race car driving real quick. I'm not sending you over there uh, to educate you, just so you get killed in a race car. So um, so we, so we, my career stopped it abruptly at 18 years of age. So I could have been to Jeff Gordon before Jeff Gordon, you know, yeah, ever yeah, materialized. You never know. The best line was we bought a brand-new Lloyd Shores car. Uh, it wasn't brand new. It was uh, used about it from a gentleman named Dave Robinson. Dave used to do the fiberglass work. Back then, sprint cars had fiberglass bodies. He even covered the tail tank uh, with them. And it came with a wing. And so we got the bright idea we'd go to Eldora for the season finale and run a wing race. Well, my mom had been to Eldora a few times, and she saw those cars with the violent flips. And um, so Dad and I are loaded up, and we got the trailer hooked up and ready to go. And she goes, let me tell both of you one thing. If that race car and the two of you leave for Eldora together – all your crap will be in the front yard when you get back. <laughs> and um, we looked at each other, and uh, we decided, Dad says, you know, I think she's serious this time. And I said, yeah, I think so too, Dad. I said, I, I think, uh, he says, well, you say we unhook the trailer, and we just go over and watch. And I said, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> and so, um, so Dad's been gone about five and a half years, but Mom still sells, uh, helps us out at the track. She sells pit passes and runs the gift shop, whatever it takes to, to help out over the track. But she's been a, a big supporter. But she did not want to see her, uh, at that time, 17-year-old son go run at Eldora. So I never ran Eldora. You know, do you realize that if you had done that and had a problem, you wouldn't be here tonight? I, I realize that, yeah. So I, oh. I've been very fortunate. I, did, I didn't make a career out of driving, but I made one from the business standpoint of it. I mean, I, as you said earlier, I worked for Chris Economaki and, and, and learned a lot, got to see all forms. You know, with Chris, the, the great thing about him, you could be standing in, a, in six inches of mud at Eldora one, on, a, on a Saturday, 
And on Tuesday, you could be at Tavern on the Green in, in New York City at an IMSA press conference with a suit and tie on. And, and he really taught me how to transition from one to the other. I mean, I was just basically a country boy from, from Indiana. And uh, so working for him, and especially in metro New York area, his, his office, you could see the skyline. Uh, he was in New Jersey. So that helped uh, quite a bit. And then um, to go from there and, and then work for Humpy Wheeler and Bruton Smith uh, at Charlotte, and then you know they, they kept expanding and building the company, and they bought New Hampshire, sent me up to run it. Um, I've, I've been very fortunate to... Uh, to be able to make my living out of out of motorsports. In fact, I talked to Bruton Smith this afternoon. He's uh, he's up in his 90s. He uh, he doesn't get around well, but he's still going to the races. He went to Sonoma last week. He's going to go up to New Hampshire in a couple of weeks. But he uh, he sounded good. And I, his son is running the operation. Now. Yeah, Marcus uh, is uh, taking over. One of the things when I was running New Hampshire, Bruton would call a week or two before the race and he'd call you every day how are ticket sales how are ticket sales and, and he would stay right on you and then he'd also transition to the operational side of things and he'd say have you checked the toilet seats and i was like no i really you know i haven't done that why why is that important and he said nobody likes loose toilet seats and he said and then if somebody's consumed too much beer they think they're hercules and they like to jerk those things off and then you got a broken toilet and so i always made sure we checked the toilet seats here's a guy that's sitting in charlotte north carolina he's a billionaire and he's worried about toilet seats up in new hampshire but then uh, so he 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 really paid attention to detail uh and then the other thing he'd make sure is uh, now you got somebody that's going to fry up some some onions and peppers and stuff right under the grandstand right you get that aroma going so they they get hungry and go to the concession stand so um bruton is obviously one of the great promoters and uh, and motorsports businessmen in, in history and then humpy was the world's greatest showman i talked to humpy a couple of weeks ago i wanted to bring in midget wrestling as part of the usac midget show and i had it planned i had the midgets lined up and i had a rig set up to wheel that rink out there and have a midget boxing midget wrestling match and then wheel it off this was going to be my inter, uh, intermission entertainment and uh we put the release out and <laughs> social media, and uh, I got a call from uh, uh, the USAC people, and uh, and in particular, the, the, they got a president there that didn't think that was quite politically correct. And uh, I tried to, I tried to say, you know, say, well, man, this this is normal stuff in Charlotte under Humphrey Wheeler. That's, that's where I learned from. And he said that could be, but you know, you're you're probably stepping on the line. And and so I respected his decision, and uh, and so I postponed that. So we'll uh, we'll do it later this year. <laughs> but uh, but there's a lot of Humpy Wheeler and Bruton Smith in the, in the way I look at stuff and, and how what we how we try to run Gas City. Did you ever uh, get involved with Eddie Gossage? Yeah, Eddie. When I got hired at Charlotte, Eddie was the VP of uh, Public Relations, and he hired me as the director. I worked directly under him. And then when Bruton was going to build Texas Motor Speedway, he took Eddie out there and he did it. So then I was promoted to Eddie's job. But, but I worked with Eddie. He he's uh, oh. he's up there in a class by himself as well. And then uh, him and Humpy would argue all the time because Humpy's an XPR guy, and Eddie was pretty uh, uh, headstrong. But but we would do press conferences all the time and and put people. Uh, I put Humpy on top of an elephant. We would have. I, one day I had we had a press conference on a Wednesday. I put Kenny Wallace on a camel because it's hump day. Uh, we we would do some. We'd blow things up all the time. And uh, Eddie's Eddie was thought he was going to get fired by Bruton uh, the year they flipped on the lights. Um, they put the first Super Speedway in Charlotte to, to install lights. Musco had to design it, and so to had a press conference and we made this fake power box to turn the lights on. And we had explosives behind it, and and the explosives. <laughs> All the sparkles came up, and they landed right in Bruton's head. <laughs> and Eddie was in charge, of course. And so um, we went a little heavy on the pyro. Well, that picture made the Associated Press, and a buddy of Bruton's called from California and said, you're on fire. <laughs> and uh, here, Eddie thought he was going to get fired. He said, man, I've just burned up the boss, and uh, and uh, he's going to fire me. And he laughed about it. He called him and said, hey, my buddy from California called. He saw that picture. That was great, you know, because he understood the value of publicity. And so... Uh, so we uh, we you know you you can't buy that kind of experience. Uh, in fact, uh, I was at Kokomo Sunday night when Robert Ballou um, had that unfortunate crash coming across the, the start finish line and hitting that, and it reminded me of the 1992 uh, Winston All Star race where Kyle Petty and and, and Davy Allison were battling, and Davy um, they crashed and and Davy got 
hurt a little bit, and they took him directly to the hospital. So the car went to Victory Lane. Davey went to the hospital, and Kyle's sitting there looking at it. And that's what happened to Robert the other night. He went to the hospital. They didn't take the car to Victory Lane, but Dave Darlin stepped in. But uh, that was the kind of finish there they had the other night, night at Kokomo. But, uh, but yeah, I, I've lived some pretty good memories there. Well, I've mentioned this a number of times, and you may remember it. Uh, and I forget what year it was when uh, Danica and Dan Weldon had a little to do. Yeah. And she smacked him with something. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> the next day, outside Texas Speedway, round two is here. Yeah. No, he bought, and he bought billboards and stuff yeah. and, oh, and, yeah. and put them up there. And, you know, um, Daryl Waltrip just stepped away from the sport uh, retiring. Right. And, and um, of course, he was called Jaws. Uh, Kale Yarbrough nicknamed him Jaws because uh, he was always uh, yapping. And he was kind of, you know, pretty vocal about things. And, and um, at the time... Um, Kelly Yarbrough was sponsored by um, Holly Farms, which was a chicken farm. And so Humpy, first he wanted to put a, uh, a guy named Moon Huffstetter. He was a swimmer. They called him the Catawba Catfish. The, the Catawba River is just south of Charlotte. Well, they wanted to put... Uh, put him in a shark tank with a shark, oh. and he and he he had set a record for treading in water. Uh, uh, he uh, so Humpy thought it'd be a great idea, and we're in this meeting, and Eddie says, "Well, what if the shark eats him?" He says, "Well, we'll put one of those metal armor guard suits on him and stuff." And and uh, the other Ed Clark who runs the land, he said, "He'll sink, he'll drown," and then and then something else, and then a five. Well, you guys figure it out then. I came up with the idea. You figure out how to do it. But so what the compromise was, uh, Humpy uh, was an avid fisherman over to coastal in the Carolinas. So he would uh, bring, um, so he found a shark and it was dead. And he brought it over and they put the shark on the back of a, a wrecker on the hook with a chicken in its mouth. And they took it up and down pit road uh, to try to add a little bit of, uh, of flavor to uh, the festivities in Charlotte. Uh, how much does... The, or does these kind of things help your audience? Do people come in and they expect entertainment, like you could get a band to come out and play at a, at a you know, in between or after? Yeah, I want to talk to you. I think that'd be a good idea for USAC Sprint Week uh, to yeah. do to who, do a who, pre who or never post stops thinking thing. about you, pal. Yeah, um, it's very important because the entertainment aspect of it. You know, we we try to do fun things at, at intermission. We have human bubble ball. We've done um, this past week. We uh, we put a couple hundred dollars of nickels and, and candy on a tarp on the front straightaway and let the kids. It's a coin scramble, and um, and the kids love that. And the and the parents and 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 that's the one thing I've really noticed. We're getting a lot more families. We're getting a lot of kids that come. We have a playground there, and the cool thing was about. Uh, out of the $200, about 150 of it came right back through the concession stand. So uh, and the gift shop. So the kids took it, and, and we 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 tripled that money, you know, with the economy. So it had a, a ripple effect on the economy there in Gas City. But um, uh, we're going to bring in a, a stunt plane uh, that'll that'll do some. Uh, performances uh, during the intermission uh, later this year. We got the, the other coming back. This Friday night, we're actually doing um, a battle of the sexes. So we, we're going to have two men, two women, and they'll do one-on-one -on -one spectator races and, and see who the uh, su supreme gender is in that regard. I need two, I got two male drivers, I need two female drivers. So you just need a car and a helmet and you're, you're good. Nina? I know. One more drink over there, and we could probably get Nina to yeah. do it. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, do, do what Eddie used to do. Get uh, uh, Robbie Knievel to come over and jump in the mud. Yeah. No, we could, uh, we're we open to all those things. So, we, you know, I went to, uh, during the winter, I, I went down here. Indianapolis hosted a, a State Fair Association convention, and they have all the vendors there. And so I went, I went down to it to try to get ideas uh, for intermission. And and uh, it's basically everybody that's involved with a fair in Indiana, they were there and they have seminars. But So I just wanted to run through the vendor stuff. And then afterwards, I, I wanted to join the, the membership. And, and these, now take it, these guys are, are carnies for a living. You know? And carnies, uh, in all due respect, they're not the top, the top tier of human life. <laughs> I mean, they're really not. And they travel all the time. And so I go up and I say, I'm Jerry Gappins. I run the Gas City I-69 Speedway, and I'd like to join your club. And they look at me and like, I don't know. He says, you don't run a fair? No. No carnival? No. I said, we run a speedway. It's entertainment. And they look at each other and say, Ah, we don't know, and 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 I thought I never thought I'd have to fight that hard to get associated with carnies. So they finally, 
hand me a piece of paper like this, and they said, well, here's the application. You take it back and fill it out and send it to us, and we'll think about it. And you know, I still haven't accepted me yet. <laughs> so, but I, I got some valuable information there. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You know, uh, racing is a sport, but it's a business. And, yeah. you know, you got to get things to get people's interest to get them in and, and entertain them. And uh, my head is off to you. If you can get families to come bring kids, because I'm one that went to the race here, friend of mine brought me here in 1962. I didn't want to go. I fought and argued. I came down here. I had a Mercury Comet station wagon. I was a real, real go-getter. It was, wasn't it? Oh. You picked up chicks with that, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah. baby. <laughs> we brought our wives. They slept inside. We slept outside. Yeah, the rain. That's, that's how you used to do it in India. I remember that, too. Yeah. And it rained. And I said, I'm not going to the race. Yeah. Oh, yeah, come on. No. I said, but I'll tell you what. You better hurry back or the beer will be gone. Well, they talked me into going, and those cars came out of four, and I'm still here. Yeah. It's, there's something about this sport that gets you. And no, and, and, and I'm very fortunate. Like with Bill, I, I'm one of those guys that could spend two hours at a shop, and I have. with. Uh, I'm kind of an old soul in one way because of, of, of going back and, and remembering the, all those things. And I remember when you could walk down Pitt Road in Indianapolis, and you could tell that that was a Kingfish, or this was a McLaren, or that was a March, or this is a PC9 or a PC10. You, you knew the difference by the uh, roll bars and some of the, the, the you know, the, the Coyote and all that. And I kind of, I miss that part of it so that's one of the great things uh, uh, that i really enjoy about bill shop and like you said seeing an aluminum tub is those are kind of like dinosaurs now so so I, i'm very fortunate that i came up in an era where i appreciate the history and 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 had a chance to be close to it, but yet also futuristic uh, with how bruton and humpy looked at things and and even that we try to continue to do today with our promotions yeah, i bet i bet you learned a lot from bruton bruton wasn't stupid he's a good businessman nah. and, and he knew how to what would attract attention and obviously you picked up on that oh yeah because if you didn't he told you about it he did <laughs> no he uh, he did um now, he, he always reminded me we were a for-profit company. <laughs> As a general manager, he'd say, you know, we are a for-profit company. And uh, I said, yes, sir, I, I, I understand that. I had, uh, we had a race that was affected by rain. You know, well, it was the USAC Midget Show. And uh, had a lot of people come from out of state, never been there, or they hadn't been in years. And they were really impressed with, with how the facility looked. And at the end of the night, I was trying to figure out if we made any money or not. And, uh, and, uh, and our, our social media guy who was tuning in tonight jacob uh, he said i hope uh, he says i said i hope we made some money and jacob says he says jerry doesn't matter we made a real statement tonight he said people got to see the facility they, they're really impressed with what they saw this is going to benefit us from you know even more this season people are going to come back here and i looked at it and i was thinking there the only statement i'm interested in right now is my bank statement <laughs> so uh but he, he was right I, I i walked away later that night and then i went to putnamville the next night for the midget show and i was amazed at how many people came forward that were in oklahoma um other states that hadn't been there and really enjoyed the experience and so that's when it's really a, a rewarding part of it but uh the business and, and the good news for us this year i'm seeing more and more business the crowds are up from what they were last year it took a little longer to get the brand out there i think we we got some of the hardcore people back uh, fairly quickly but you got to get those fringe fans and and that's what we've worked hard at so uh we're definitely making a good progress and 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 we're uh, i'm very thankful for the people that come out and and uh, sample the product and, and and visit us so we're i'm encouraged and i'm a pretty optimistic person but I think uh, I think it's only going to get better. From your perspective, is short track racing healthy? Now I'm I'm thinking primarily of open wheel, which I don't know if you have a lot of, but you have a boatload yeah. of stock cars and various series there. But do you think short track racing is healthy right now? I, I do. Uh, I think. Um I think, and I, I spent. A, I, I made a great career and a great living in NASCAR, but uh, but NASCAR through the years has alienated a lot of fans, and I think a lot of those fans have returned to the roots um, of of short track racing. And I look over at King, the Kings Royal, and and uh, and where they're filling that thing with the uh, twenty thousand plus people that are coming to that. It's outdrawn the NASCAR Truck Race now. Um, you, you look at uh, the SmackDown up at Kokomo, and it fills the grandstands for three or four nights there. Um, so I think. People People can relate to the short track part of it, um, and I, I. The only thing I really concerns me uh, is more on the competitive side of it, um, where the shocks on a sprint car. I mean, I, I saw four shocks go out of Scott Benick's uh, uh, thing uh, shop there in Marion uh, over the winter, and it was sixty-five hundred dollars worth of shocks for a Silver Crown car, and I'm like, 
I was like, I never owned a race car that cost more than $6,500. So, so I worry about the cost for competitors. Now, the other night, we had 40 non-wing sprint cars, and then Sunday night, they had 21 at Kokomo. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe Sunday night would hurt you a little, but where does it go from 40 to 21? And, and I, so I think it's important to try to keep things affordable. I, I bought a Gertie engine in 1979 for my sprint car, and it was $10,000, and that was from the oil pound. All I had to do is, in, uh, is stick it in the race car and go racing. The same engine now is over $50,000. And so that concerns me, and that's why you're seeing people try to experiment a little bit with uh, crate engines, uh, uh, the 305s, the 360s, but I, I think we have to watch the cost to keep it healthy where we got participants, but I think race fans, truly, you know, I went to Winchester uh, on Sunday afternoon, I did Kokomo later, but Winchester had the sprints back for the first time in, in nine years, yeah. and they had a tremendous crowd, and the, the place, it had that energy about it, and the, uh, the history with the old-timers part of it, and it was really kind of cool to see see people turn it out so i think uh short track racing is definitely on the rise yeah well i remember being at, at winchester when uh, sarah fisher set the midget record yeah it didn't last long but she set the record and the number of drivers who went on from open wheel short track up to indycar racing that said how'd you like winter it scared the hell out of me are you yeah. kidding i didn't like it well so well we ran it but i was scared yeah, they, didn't like it. they have respect for it because oh, yeah, yeah. it's bitten a lot of people in its day. Uh, I was watching the Thunder Roadster uh, race right afterwards, and they sounded a little bit like Indy cars with the with the Yamaha motors in them. And I, I was sitting there thinking that. Um, it might be cool to have like an Indy Lights race there, and if you could get Wyndham and Swanson and some of our local guys that could, if they could get rides in those, I think that would be a great part of a weekend with sprint cars and and uh, you know when I was a kid growing up USAC used to race a lot of double headers at places right. like Winchester you'd have the sprints and the midgets and it was a great show here in Salem and and over in uh, um, New Bremen uh, it, it seemed like a lot of it was on on asphalt but uh, but it was good to, to see that that crowd and and just uh, to see uh, the thing come back to life do you think that it's kind of harmful a little bit that you can't go into the short track open wheel stuff and work your way to indianapolis anymore now you got to come from some other country run uh, formula one for six or seven years and then come here and realize this is a place to race uh you know it, it doesn't happen the foits and the snevas and those people that worked their way up and got there it doesn't happen very seldom anymore. No, I, and I understand that and, and the money part of it. That's one of the things that frustrates me just a little bit about the USAC midget part of it. Toyota is obviously a big player, and, and that's great to have a, a major company putting money in, but they're developing those drivers to go to NASCAR because that's what Toyota's uh, right. involved right. in. Right. I hope, I don't know any behind-the-scenes information, but I hope that uh, uh, that uh, Jay Fry and, and, and those guys over there are, are – Maybe Toyota is one of those manufacturers that's taking a look at IndyCar, but it's going to take having some manufacturers involved um, that maybe have a presence in midgets or, or sprint cars that will look at taking their talent to IndyCar racing besides just NASCAR because we've lost Carl, uh, Kyle Larson. I mean, it goes back quite a bit with you know Schrader and Gordon and and Stewart, and a lot of them have gone to NASCAR uh, through the years. But I I really. I really think, uh, but it's it's economics, and and with Bill talking about putting a team together, my first thought was, guys, I hope he gets a, a Brian Clawson type of driver, you know. But it it all is boils down to the economics of it, and I'm, I know that. And the short tracks, uh, and I don't think it's changed yet, but uh, a year, a couple of years ago, the midget uh, engine cost more than a sprint car engine. I know by a lot. Yeah, they weren't cheap. No. And there's only, and there's only half as many cylinders, you know. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned when you take your car to the track, you had an open trailer, trailer that you yeah. put it in. Now these guys reel up, and they've got these big enclosed trailers. You know, the tractor trailers, yeah. Some of them have yeah, transporters, yeah. I mean, they, they make tiny houses look small. <laughs> <laughs> My, well, my first house wasn't as big as uh, some of those that come yeah, into the pits. That's yeah. probably true. Are you uh, happy you made the transition that you left 
New Hampshire and came here, took over. Yeah, I spent one year in Charlotte before coming up, but I I, I love it. My my I'm from near the Kokomo, uh, the Sharpsville area up there. Uh, I have my family's still based here. Uh, I have two sons that still live; they're adults and married and everything. They still live in North Carolina, so I, I do miss being a little closer to them and, and seeing them. But uh, but I can drive down there pretty quick and, and and fly even quicker. But it's nice to be around my mom and and uh, and my nieces and nephews and their kids and. and and my brother and sister. So uh, Indiana's home, you know, and I've never forgotten my roots. When I went to work for Chris Economac, he, he, he hired me for the summer. I was between my sophomore and junior years in, in, at Ball State. So I figured I'd have a good summer job and come back in the fall for my junior year at Ball State, but he kept me. So, so what I thought would be a three-month vacancy out of Indiana ended up being 36 years. So, but now I'm back, so I, it just took me a while. I remember talking to, I had uh, Dave Argerbright who wrote the book, on, yeah. and I said, what was it like spending time with Chris? He said, are you kidding me? He doesn't pay any attention to anything. If he wants to go from here to there and there's a one-way street, he don't give a crap which way. He's going whatever is the easiest. So I was scared to death. He was. He didn't want to ride in a car with him. I, I remember we did a we did a U-turn on, uh, on, on right at Times Square uh, in New York City. We were going to some function there for uh, racing imps or whatever, and a truck was blocking his passage. So he just did a U-turn, got up on the sidewalks, people scattering. We came back around, and he's just oblivious to a little Audi sports car that he'd drive. And uh, his wife Tommy used to say, "It's uh, yeah, well, a white knuckle ride." every time with him that's that's what i hear is true and chris would always say you know, Jerry, welcome to new york city with uh, broken hearts and dented fenders <laughs> <laughs> uh, chris was a great guy i spent a lot of time uh, mostly here when he came in for the month and it was funny everybody's read a tat on computers and they had a regular typewriter for him they, yeah the 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 media centers all around they would have the old manual yeah. thing and he could i called them beaters he could beat on those things and uh <laughs> when radio funny. shack came out with the tandy 100 we uh, uh, we thought that was great he thought it was an etch-a-sketch he'd shake it or whatever <laughs> <laughs> what the heck he he was amazed he's when when we used to have a telecopier now this is going back a lot of people but but it was a cylinder and it would take either four or six minutes to, over the phone line to, to, to and we thought that was a great thing yeah. and he would stand there and he'd watch that thing and he was in amazement how that little pin would go and it all of a sudden it would it would bring out the replica of the other and then um and then the fax machine came in and that was like over the top for him and then and then he was done by email yeah. so so he was a. Uh, but i tell you what he was Probably one of the most knowledgeable and, and respected guys. He, uh, his his Rolodex on his desk. There were a couple of them. He he had more contacts and and more people. Um, he knew how to get things done, and he had a nose for news for sure. Well, it appears from what I've heard in, uh, about your facility up there and what you're doing with it, you've learned as you've gone up. It took you 36 years, but you've learned, and now you're here, and. Uh, Again, I hear it's doing really, really, really well. What have you got scheduled for the 4th of July? Anything special? Yeah, we're going to try a Saturday night on the 4th. Uh, uh, a local track, Montpelier, is closed down, and I always kind of wanted to see what a Saturday would be like. So we've got uh, uh, Circle City Pyros. Don and his gang will come down and do, uh, come up and do um, fireworks, and then we've got uh, uh, the non-wing sprints, modifieds, uh, all of our racing, and, and uh, so the fireworks will be a big thing on a Saturday night. And uh, uh, so we that'll be on Saturday night, July 6th. So I'm hoping um, uh, that'll work well. Uh, Friday night, Bloomington had scheduled some stuff, and Paragon's got that as well. So we thought maybe Saturday. I mean, I know Saturday's still got uh, Lincoln Park, and you've got Lawrenceburg. But uh, we'll we'll see how it all balances out there with uh, with car counts and where we are. But I just, you know, one of the struggles with Gas City that um, is it's Friday, so people are working. So then they make a bonsai run, and anybody in this area that wants to come down, you got to deal with construction and and, and everything yeah. here in Indianapolis and I-69. So I, I'm anxious to try. A Saturday where people can leisurely uh, mosey on up to exit two, 259 off of I-69 and, and enjoy some racing that way. Well, from what I understand and from your your PR lady here who I circumvented not realizing yeah. and I contacted you, like one day she, I, she said, you ought to have Jerry back. I said, yeah. You want me to get a hold of him? I said, no, I know how to get a hold of him. Yeah. Didn't realize she was your PR gal. So. Yeah, no, she's a she's kind of, um, she's a, she's stealth-like. She's kind of behind the scenes there and just makes it all well, happen. 
I got down and bowed and, uh, and apologized. Yeah. <laughs> it took me 15 minutes to get back up off the yeah. floor. But I really try to mess her up because I try to do a draft for her to make it as easy as possible or to <laughs> at least get my ideas into it. And then she takes it off from there and massages it. And uh, and then I'm too tired for race results, so I'll, I'll see where I get the email at 4 in the morning on uh, from Friday night to Saturday where she's done the release, and then I'll have to – put my glasses on and, and wipe the sleepies out of my eyes to proofread it and we we get it out but she's good she is good i was sitting next to her in uh watkins Glen, and she's sitting next to me and we're talking she's i'm just looking out the window to see who's going by and the next day or, or i get home this was on a sunday i get home monday and she's reporting on a race that was in europe somewhere I said, now, how the hell did you do that? You yeah. were sitting right here. I saw you. Yeah. And she had a complete story. I went, yeah. good grief. Yeah. She's good. <laughs> no, she is. And, and uh, you're six hours ahead of us, so. Yeah, well. Yeah. If she did something from Australia, she could really be dangerous, oh, you know. Boy. Europe, Australia, you get all the continents covered and just logistically work the time out. Well, I thank you for coming up here, or down here, actually. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate your time, and good luck on what you're doing, and hope everything works out for you. And if you get some Saturday program or something, Put it good entertainment. This is a guy right here. I know. It's a, we're going to work on that. And and before I go, I you know the last year I was introduced to you uh, by Dick Jordan, and I I texted Dick before we came. I don't know how he's feeling tonight, but he's struggling. Obviously, a lot of people know that, and uh, I think about him every day. And I, I ask everybody to keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, what a world class gentleman Dick Jordan is, and I'm hope he's able to tune in and and see this film well enough tonight. But if not, uh, uh, what an incredible person that I've been fortunate to be around for nearly 40 years and yeah. and he's the one that got me here last year and i appreciate that too and i talked to him today actually oh good and uh, i had called him a couple times and he didn't answer so I, after it rings about 10 times that's a sign that he doesn't feel well he didn't yeah, answer right uh well he called me today and he said i saw it i haven't felt good for the last couple of weeks but he, he said if you know what in, in time if i feel well i'll come in I'll do your program. Okay, good. And uh, I said, good, because Dr. Pat Sullivan, I asked him if he'd come yeah. that night, and he said, oh, absolutely. Right. You get Dick there, I'll be there. I said, okay, so. No, they, they honored him at the Speedway, uh, you yeah. know, a month or so ago, and what a, it was a who's who racing that turned out, and it, it was really, I was glad to see that, because the, that, the man so well respected and he still messes with the USAC Thunder uh, Midwest Thunder D2 <laughs> he wants the results so he can keep up with the points so he's still got his hand in it uh, even today with uh, trying to make sure USAC goes on and the history is preserved uh, well, I, I have nothing but good things as many years as I've known him whenever I thought there's a guy in town that I'd like to get a hold of I didn't know how to get him so I called Dick and he said I'll get back to you and sure enough the guy yeah. be here yeah no, Almost he'd... never failed. Whenever I called with something, I, I had a guest back out. Is there somebody from USAC that's in town? Let me look. And he called me back, and I get Dave or Rico uh, Abreu or somebody. Yeah. You know, so he was a great guy. I'm going to miss him terribly. He's just a super guy. Well, I thank you for your time and coming down here. Good luck, and, and congratulations on building what once was a good thing tailed off, and now you've got to climb it again. That's great. And to hear you got a hundred and some cars. Holy Toledo! Yeah, no. We're, Par- we're, is parking a problem? Um, no, we, we're blessed with good sized pits there. Uh, so so far so good. I hope it's a problem someday. I hope they have to the park in Marion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do the shuttle. I'll get Bill's uh, limo. There you go. Uh, yeah, and we'll we'll bring him on in. Boy, that woke him up. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. We can take him six at a time. It there, won't take yeah. more than three days. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. Good luck with what you're doing, and uh, hope more people stop up and see any people in here. If you haven't seen a good race up, yeah. in, up at Gas City, go up. It's not that far. Well, thank you for having me on. Just go to GasCityI69Speedway.com. It's got a lot of good information there for you. Thanks for being here. Jerry Gapens. <laughs> thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Remember I said next week my first scheduled guest is the uh, the Viking, IMS Radio Network Racing uh, Analyst Anders Krohn will be a great guy. He is, and if you've been listening to them, the broadcast, he's great. He's really good. And I got somebody else in mind to get here, so we'll be here next week. Until then, thanks for everybody being here. If, first night, it hasn't rained in what six months or something. People stayed home and cut their grass and all that kind of thing. But uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Until next week, good night.